Saul was afraid of the world too, like the Philistines. Don't they represent the world? Like, um, well, yeah. Like as you point out, he he was afraid of David. Um, he was afraid of his own people. He was afraid of the Philistines, who were not his people, people outside Israel. So that would point to the world. And he was afraid of David. Um, Jonathan. So so there we we would see the the uh, people in the churches have a definite problem with fear. Um, and and they are afraid of their own people concerning their doctrine. They they have to maintain acceptable doctrine. Um, they're afraid of the world. Um, you can see that with the the church that wants to bring in the rock music. They they want to bring in some excitement into the congregation. You right. know you you can see it. Um, yeah. like, like in churches, uh, I was, I was in so-called reformed churches, 10th Presbyterian, you know, a very, um, at the time, you know, thought of as a very sound church. And on the week, you know, what they did in their youth group was party, party, party. And, and on the weekend, sometimes in the summer, you know, oh, Christian dances where they play Christian rock. And it, it was the world come into the church. And and why? Why would the church want, want to bring the world in? Well, they wanted to attract the world. They wanted to appeal to the world. They wanted to be like the world. They were afraid to to teach soundly and and to teach rightly and mm -hmm. and to leave off those things for probably the opinion of the world uh you know oh these people you know they're they're so stiff and and dull and and so it, it gets into that kind of an area or they wouldn't want to be viewed as holy rollers you know as as churches in the South kind of have had that reputation, you know, the, the, where um, other churches, they get up close to the world and, and try to identify yeah. with the world. Uh, but as yeah. far as David or Jonathan, that would also be the fear within the congregation of God's presence, his true presence within his elect. Uh, do you think it was pleasant for the pastor after giving a sermon? <laughs> and uh, he would know. He would know definitely which ones in the congregation um, to expect it from when he said something free will or he said something <clears throat> just incorrect. And and here comes this this one member or this one person. Uh, always points out to him, you know, Pastor, when you said that, um, have you ever considered this verse over here? It doesn't seem to allow for that conclusion. And like, like um, I'll give another personal example. I visited New Hampshire back in the 90s, my wife and I, and um, the pastor was preaching um, free will, and I went up to him and I said, well, you know, the Bible teaches election, here's some verse, and he said, let me stop you there, let me stop you there, because um, you have your verses, your set of verses, I have my set of verses, and, and it's not going to go anywhere, so no sense us even getting into it. And, and, and the, the pastor's probably get it all or used to get it all the time and which is why it was a relief to them in some ways when the saints left when when um, we departed out right. uh, and and all of a sudden uh, we uh, were in a church with head coverings and um, a few did not put on the head coverings. And and other, you know, the rest of the congregation did. And and you see it causes trouble in that kind of situation. Why won't they put on a head covering? 
there, you know, you, you can't um, partake of the Lord's table. You can't do this. Um, why, why don't you just join in? And, and, and that's because um, the Lord's people have a conscience that um, constrains us, and it's the working of the Spirit. We, we uh, must do things according to God's will and not the church or man's, and it would have been very disturbing at times, I'm sure, to people in the church, and it's a right. form of fear. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you.